Welcome to the It's Almost Over edition of Sharing Socks. I'm Southside Sox duty geezer Lee Allen. With me, my son, and uh, for the last time, uh, probably this year, uh, next room correspondent Will heads back home to Los Angeles next week after watching his wife, uh, Bryce Gangle, starring in a show in Milwaukee, Milwaukee rep for the sweep. Um, well, <laughs> That was an interesting week. <laughs> I I believe when we left off last week, we had no hope, but there was still a chance. Yeah, there was mathematical possibility even at the yeah division, and like a two percent or something chance left for a wild card. But when you get swept by Detroit at home, <laughs> I mean, my feeling was if they somehow, it was down to a one in 10,000 chance or something like that uh, for the wild card going into Wednesday night when they lost and it was it was all over. Uh, but my feeling was if you got that number six wild card in this situation, you should just say, thank you, but we don't deserve this. Give it to a team that actually tried this year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I I think we can say now uh, the season's officially, officially over. It was not a week ago. Well, there's another week to go. They get three exciting games in San Diego, including facing Hugh Darvish. Uh, We're recording on Friday morning. They face Hugh Darvish tonight. Blake Snell. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we have this little uh, E shape next to our name on the ESPN standings, <laughs> uh, which tells me yeah. we are we are mathematically through. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to spend I was going to spend the big bucks to go to the uh, San Diego series against the White Sox when I anticipated uh, being the weekend we would lock up the division and it would be just so exciting and. Uh, those tickets were not cheap, so the White Sox really saved me not only a nice uh, two and a half, three hour drive, but they they saved me like you know hundred something bucks, and I appreciate <laughs> that. So when you have they, a team they've saved us hundreds and hundreds of bucks this year. This tells you the state of the White Sox. My softball team in LA, the Trash Pandas. What up, Trash Pandas? Uh, we are two and zero oh this fall season. I suggested to the team that we all run onto the field while thunderstruck by ACDC plays. Any White Sox fan knows that that's the song the White Sox take the field to. Gets you amped like no other song. The team passed because why would we want to play like the White Sox? <laughs> this yeah. is this is a, a softball team that went 1-12 and 12 last season. <laughs> Uh, we're expected to probably go one and twelve this season. We are two and zero. Oh. Again, shout out to the Trash Pandas. Uh, but they passed in fear of playing like the Chicago White Sox. I I think that's the season in a nutshell. That's the season in a yeah. nutshell. A bunch of guys who are not even White Sox and, and you, you know fans. You know, White Sox defense is kind of slow pitch softball defense. You get we are really, we are better. You get old, out of shape guys in the corners, and at first base, right? That's basically every slow pitch softball team. Uh, well, a catcher right now uh, who is barely mobile. I mean, that's the White Sox. It's it, it's. It, it's I, I it's, can tell you right now. Fits. I can tell you right now. I would. We've got we've got Alex in left. We've got Nick in center. We've got Adam in right. I would much rather have my three outfielders than any of the White Sox outfielders uh, from, I I guess it was last night, uh, when they were starting Vaughn, Pollock, and Sheets out there. No, no, no. uh, That was two nights ago. Wednesday night, Thursday, they started Mark Payton, who had a career. I mean, he's played, I don't know, a couple dozen major league games uh, for the Reds in past years. But that's one for his scrapbook. Who knows if he'll ever play in the major leagues again, but he had a great game. He had a nice catch in foul territory and uh, was involved in every run, uh, every series, whether it was one, uh, anyhow, two hits and hustled, not a hundred percent hustle, but pretty good, strong hustle to get to second base when their second baseman dropped a routine pop-up. 
Uh, okay, so and then scored the winning round on that. I I didn't watch last night because uh, I didn't want my eyes to bleed. So, what position did he play? Peyton was in left. So we had a left. He's a real fielder. outfielder, incidentally. I mean, he's, he's not a major fielder. leaguer. He's really kind of a triple A player, but he's an hold outfielder. On, hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm trying to process something real quick. We had a, a left fielder who caught the ball on the other side of the white line. Yes. How did he get there? Did he take the usual zigzags that our left fielders? He do? he kind of went right in that direction, like on a straight path. Uh, pretty much, yeah. But I learned in physics. I learned in physics in high school. The one day I was paying attention, that the shortest distance between two points is a big old zigzag with a bunch of loops and swooping around and having to spin your body real quick because you broke and, the wrong way. And a couple way. steps the other direction first. That's very important. Oh, oh, you have to do that because you have to you have to wind up <laughs> to be able to do the zigzag. Okay, so that's fun. At least we had a guy come up and have a good day. I always love when a when a you know a minor leader or whatever his status will be moving forward. I love seeing those guys come up and have a good day. I do in too. September. I do too. Yeah. Great. and I love to see actually somebody hustle uh, who's in a White Sox uniform. But we're not used to that. Uh, yeah. But I guess are, we are, should talk. We should talk about sort of the. Uh, I know we're going to talk about uh, what players to expect next year and who we think we should trade well let's talk about the elephant in the ether here you know it's not confirmed they they, they the rumors are out there the rumors are fairly strong that Louisa will not be back and it'll be a gentle letdown you know, it's because of health reasons and as doctors say etc cetera, etc cetera. and certainly unfortunately the bloom is off the gal Cairo with with the eight straight losses i know, he started out I know. So well. he chewed the team out they were actually had some life and as soon as they lost that first game to Cleveland, the air was out of the balloon. And they, yeah. they've been flat ever since. I mean, they happened to win Thursday. They have to end the losing streak because of Peyton. Uh, not because of any of the guys in the major league. Yeah, team. I, I mean, it, uh, is, it is truly a bummer that the team could not get it together at all for Cairo after that first Cleveland loss. Just because the guy did come in and do a really great job. There was certainly a point where I didn't think he was going to be the manager of the White Sox next year, but was probably looking at some sort of upgrade around the league in some way after a, a decent showing. And, you know, the the life drained out of this team. You know, it was like they all got, you know, when you watch a vampire movie and the vampire sucks the life out of someone – but doesn't turn them into a vampire. That was the White Sox over the. I, I think they were more. If, if for those who watch uh, what we do in the shadows, uh, more of a Colin Robinson energy vampire, yes. not a blood sucking vampire. Yes, I, I totally agree. That is an absolutely astute comparison. We were the Colin Robinsons of baseball over the last week. I, I mean, it's worth watching that after show being for many dead reasons. for almost the entire year. Until uh, correct, the Hall of Famer correct. baseball person disappeared. We had a week of Nandor, but then it uh, <laughs> went back to Colin Robinson. So Larusa not confirmed. Uh, it is confirmed he's not coming back this year. Surprise, surprise. The team does. And I guarantee the you, he would have been back if they continued the winning streak and were in contention, so he could claim the division title. I guarantee you, he would have been back. But there was no reason for him to come back for humiliation. I'm gonna play devil's advocate. Devil's advocate and agree with you. Uh, there, there is, there is no way he would have sat that out. He would have come back. He would have taken the credit for everything, and they would have lost in the first round with a run differential of negative forty-five. Uh, so we have not heard for sure whether or not Larusa will be back. I Let's do, presume he's not. I do think. Oh my gosh! I can't even believe I'm saying this. I do think he won't be back. I, I, I agree. I think he won't be. I, I don't know. Fingers how, crossed. I don't know. Exactly. The second I said it, I was like, oh, great. Another year of Larusa. Here we go. Uh, I, I don't know if they'll do a phony. We're bumping him up in the organization thing. I, Paul I Sullivan bets on that. And he may yeah. be right. I mean, it's the smart bet because Larusa's ego is 
monumental. I mean, I'm an actor, so I naturally have a massive ego. Uh, but my ego compared to LaRusso's ego, uh, I mean, I'm the most humble guy in the world compared to him. <laughs> so uh, I do think they will have to do something like that or he will threaten to manage again, uh, which is pretty good leverage since we really don't want him to do that and he's under contract to do it. Uh, but I think because uh, his his partner in crime, Jerry Reinstorf, still has the majority share of the team, he will he get... He doesn't fucked. have the majority oh, share. Right, he has right, controlling right. shares. And, yeah. Uh, he will uh, be bumped up to, you know, um, either head, head Midwesterner of baseball operations in and around the greater St. Louis metro, or over the bartending program at a uh, guaranteed rate, which I think might be a good might be a good move for him. I, I thought he um, could be in charge of the wines selected for uh, the luxury. Absolutely, boxes. the guy knows his way around a, a nice piece of stemware, and uh, I just really, really hope we don't get the news that this guy's going to be the manager. Because I will say, while we will be back here doing sharing socks. I will probably be sharing things about other teams we should be considering as we move forward. Uh, I I can't do another year under La Russa. I can't. I, I, I really don't think he'll be back, at least as manager. I, I just don't think he will be. I, I think we're in for an end of uh, the season Rickon press conference where he makes excuses for absolutely everything. Thanks, Tony, for being wonderful. It's all because of the injuries. It's just the injuries. Yeah, it's only we, the tried injuries. To, we tried to overcome it. Tony did everything he could to overcome the injuries, but we couldn't do it. And never, blah, blah, never, blah. never mind that in all the stats, the Sox are just slightly worse than average in number of days lost to injury and uh, even payroll. You know, if you value people that way, lost to injury. Uh, it's, and besides which, the guys who were gone, I, I, I looked this up. Tim Anderson, who is, uh, you know, headed for dozens of games this year, played 153 games in 2018. That's pretty good. That, yeah. That's really good. Short that's what you expect. That's what you yeah. expect from a major Hasn't been over 123 since. Uh, Luis Robert played 56 in the 2020-60 game season. Played 98 last year, you know, a few dozen this year. Aloy topped out at 122 2019. Hasn't had 79 since. These guys are just fragile and injury prone. Yes, Tim and Luis's end of the season injuries to their hands were freak things. That was not a yeah. matter of bad conditioning or not being in shape or whatever. Or sure. Being strange in how you run. Those were just bad luck. But the earlier ones, bad conditioning, strangely odd. I mean, Luis Robert. One of the great hustle guys of baseball just didn't seem to care an iota this year. Just kind of loafed after balls out in the outfield. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. Um, you know, I hate to say it because I, I love these White Sox, but the, the too cool for school attitude kind of got bumped up to the extreme this year uh, with this group of guys. They, they're the the hustle was gone the the fundamentals of baseball essentially were were gone um and you know not to be I'm a not dead sure horse. the fundamentals of baseball were ever there they have they but, haven't been around for a long time but with a good manager they would have improved throughout the year <laughs> they would have we would have seen guys getting better at the fundamentals of baseball and they deteriorated even as this miserable season went. Uh, if, if we have La Russa back, this team is well, – I, I looked at uh, projections for next year uh, just on a couple, you know, super early, way too early projection things. We don't even know what the personnel will be on this team next year. Had the White Sox around the 75-win mark, uh, which shockingly is not going to get you to the playoffs, even in the AL Central – because we have the balanced schedule next year, which means we're going to have to play more real teams. Uh, that's not good for us. So I, 
I think, uh, I hate to say to expect a 75 win season, but without some major changes, I think those projections are pretty fair. We got to 76 wins this season. We were 76 and 71. We might get to 79 by the end of the year if we're lucky. Well, they have to go four and two to get to 581 and 81. No, no. Seems chance. unlikely with the San Diego trip. It, but it would be so appropriate. Because 81 and 81, that's absolute mediocrity, obviously. That that would seem really appropriate. I disagree. I don't think we've earned absolute mediocrity. I think we are just below that. I think we have seen just below absolute mediocrity all year. I, I'm predicting an 80 and 82 finish. Mainly like, because San Diego still has something to play for. So San Diego is going to actually be trying to win these next two games. I mean, they don't have super something to play for, but they do. Uh, they're, they're still in this oh, game. Yeah. They don't, they, they don't want to lose momentum. Right. No, they've got – I think the White Sox, the second game, Saturday's game, is Dylan Cease against uh, Mike Clevenger. And Clevenger has not only had a very bad year, he's been really horrible lately. So I, I think – uh, the White Sox have a good crack on Saturday, Friday, and except, Sunday. Except, hmm. except, have we played the last couple times Dylan started? So I don't think that that means that Cease is going to come out on top in that game, despite how Cease has pitched fine in those in those games. Through we, the five innings, he lasts because he's thrown 110 pitches already. Exactly. Um, all right, we have to take our break here, but when we come back, let's talk about who we think should be on the Chicago White Sox next year and who should not. Uh, We will hang in there. We will be right back on Sharing Socks. Welcome back to Sharing Socks. Uh, We had a very upbeat, uh, depressive discussion in the first half of the podcast. (laughs) Uh, But let's talk about uh, moving forward. Talk about who the White Sox should deal in this offseason. My thread with my White Sox buddies uh, saying Giolito's got to go. Moncada's got to go. So I guess we just want to sell guys at their lowest points and get nothing. Yeah, the in problem return. is with a lot of guys you're selling low. Paul Sullivan, uh, the Tribune columnist on Thursday, said Dylan Cease is the only untouchable. And of course, on the, on the position player side, Jose Abreu is a free agent. He is had none of that talk that he had last time around that extension time of, boy, I just want to stay with this team because I love this team. None of that's been out there. The team hasn't been saying, oh, we got to keep Jose Abreu. Jose could be gone. Uh, But he's only one of five designated hitters that we throw out in the lineup every day. Sullivan suggests that Moncada, Grandal, Kelly, and Leury are unmovable. There is nothing you could do to trade these guys. You, you couldn't trade them for a beer vendor. And I think basically he's right. They all have salaries way, way more than what they ought to be getting paid for what they produce and showed no signs of, oh, he's going to pull out of this and it's going to be great. So those guys, there's nothing you can do about them. The whole bullpen just about, I mean, it's, it's locked in for next year. You've got, and, and Crochet won't be back. He had his surgery in April. 15 months is typical on, on Tommy John. So if he's back next year, it'll be August, September. Uh, and you have no idea what he will be like recovering from Tommy right, John either. Right. Yeah. I, well, most guys come out of it pretty good shape, but you don't know. Some don't. You don't know. Yeah. Uh, but all of the things that are locked in uh, for next year, you're going to have to either eat a tremendous amount of money, which the White Sox, I'll say it did with Dallas Keuchel, um, but otherwise they're not inclined to do. The, there were such stupid contracts. I mean, we haven't even talked here yet during this show. This should be next week's. How far away can Rick Hahn go and still not be dangerous? Could, could we ship him to somewhere in the Yukon? Uh, Hahn is, I mean, Hahn is the one who set up the team with five designated hitters that's last in pretty much every de- defensive category, 28th now at fan graphs with 30th oh. and, and baseball reference. Okay. Uh, Little dead, bump last, up. dead last in both of them 
in the ratings, Uzer and Artot that, that measure range. <laughs> you got no range. You know, you got Vaughn out there, he can go eight feet either direction, and Cheats can go 12 feet either direction, and Loy up to 15. I, I read an argument on some block site saying, you know, Loy, and he's correct here, is a bad left fielder, quite bad. And it, this even rated at like 94th out of 120 or something. He's bad, but he's not Sheets or Vaughn bad. So yeah. he's got to be the one you had to keep out there and be in left field as long as he can stay healthy. And something has to happen. Which with he the others. can't. As we know, he <laughs> can't. So, no. I, yeah, I mean, Aloy, Aloy is one of those guys where you're like, okay, I can hit still, thank goodness. Uh, well, he hits you, well. You got to try to get him to some playable level of the outfield where he can stay in the game. Aloy, I, I'm happy to keep. I mean, he's one of the bright spots at the plate, so that's great. But the other the other guys we have out there, I mean, they just can't play outfield at a major league level again. It's unbelievable that we went a whole season with a bunch of mediocre first basemen playing in the outfield in major league baseball i don't know if you've seen but the outfields in the pros are big and they require (laughs) a guy to move some and you gave you gave them credit for moving eight feet but they actually only move six feet in the right direction because the first two feet go in the opposite direction i i don't know who we can unload to get anything I, well, it's interesting. It'd be interesting to see what you could get for Sheets. Of course, we need left-handed hitters, but because of his home and road splits, they're incredible. He has one home run on the road. Uh, and his difference in batting average is about 100 points. It's How do you explain that? He doesn't, I mean, sleep, he doesn't sleep well in hotel beds? I, 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 don't, yeah. I don't know what it could be. Uh, but uh, Sullivan, to go, to go back to him, says that they have to break up the core somewhat. And he is suggesting Anderson, Robert, and Kopech, because you're selling high on those three. They're all, they're um, not on an injury sense, but on, and he's not saying get rid of all of them. It says, but he's saying you can get something for these guys. Uh, and you can. You, you would get something good for any of those. Problem is, there's not a backup shortstop. Elvis Andrus is a free agent. Uh, all the others, I mean, Danny Mendick will be back, I guess, if you want to go with that. Otherwise, it's 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 more Leori, uh, which is a pretty terrible thought. Robert, we don't have a viable center fielder. Now, there are guys in the minors. So Colas, uh, I guess, can play some center field and maybe can make it in the major leagues. Uh, and maybe. then Kopech, of course. Kopech uh, is... Really, right now, you're number four starter, but for most of the season, it was number three. Uh, yeah, I mean, Kopech, there is reason to believe that he can be a good major league pitcher. I mean, his stuff... Oh, he was a good major league pitcher this year. His when it's on is, is insane. I just mean, like, uh, over time. It, it does yeah. seem like Kopech, he certainly has the stuff. If he can stay healthy... Uh, he, a guy to trade he's a guy to trade to get something but you have to when you're talking about trading anderson robert kopech you're talking about a full rebuild and which we've, we've seen before and we've seen how well they do it exactly so you have to if you're going to trade those guys because our farm system is depleted if you're going to trade those guys you have to to get something big for them in terms of minor league players. Oh, well, or major league players. Which I don't know would happen. So <laughs> I... Uh, I yeah, it's, it's, a bad, certain... it's, it's a banner year for free agent shortstops. So people will pick those up. And Tim, while certainly a very valuable player, is a, just a medium shortstop. He's, he's no big defensive upgrade for anybody. Kopech, I, I think Kopech just wore out this year. And... and he had pitched very – they overpitched him. Yeah. They overpitched him. And that's a La Russa thing. He had pitched very little in the last few years, and, and I think he'll be just fine next year. And remember, Cueto's a free agent. 
Yeah, well, Cueto. So they're not going to get Johnny Cueto on a minor league contract again. Do do they say, well, you've been great, Johnny. We're going to keep you, and here's some money. Uh, you know, the 30 teams out there that want a starter, even a 36-year-old one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a world where they offer something to Cueto to get him to come back, but I, I just don't. He he had a good showing. I mean, he came out of nowhere and he he had a nice season. He had some bad starts, but he had mostly very decent starts. No, and Cueto Cueto on uh, pitching war, and remember, two point oh indicates you're a real major league regular. Uh, pitching war sees six point six. I mean, he's going to be the number two guy in the Cy Young voting behind Verlander. Uh, Cueto, 3.1. That's very solid. And Kopech at 2.2, even with some some injuries in there. So those are three solid major league pitchers. That's it. Now, Lance Lynn, for about a month in there, was really good. Yeah. Um, he was out for two months. He was terrible for a little over a month. He had a very good month. And now he seems to be tiring somewhat again. But he's been okay. And he's back next year anyway. There's nothing you can do about it. I don't think anybody's going to trade for him. Uh, also, the team, I believe, cost Cease a Cy Young this year because Cease had all the momentum. Verlander was out. The White Sox started surging. If the White Sox had won the division, I think Cease wins the Cy Young. But they, you know, we talked about it. They fell apart, and they couldn't even give Dylan the runs, the few runs he needs most of the time. So, uh, yeah, he will be absolutely second in the Cy Young voting. But I think there was a world where Dylan Cease is a Cy Young winner uh, after this season. Yeah, we have to sell. You have to sell. You can't put these guys back out there. But as you said, there's no one to replace them. If you get rid of Luis Robert, you have Adam Engel, a guy who can catch a fly ball, and that's it. That's well, it. and you have Pollock if he decides to take his personal choice of getting paid thirteen million next year because he's made played enough games that it's up to thirteen. He's got the opt-in team that has nothing to say about it. It's a really strange contract. That's why the Dodgers are willing to trade it for Craig Kimbrell because it's a bizarre contract. How they and I'd be I'd be shocked if Pollock doesn't pick up his option. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, the thought all along at the beginning is, well, there's no way he'll pick it up because if he doesn't pick it up, he gets five million anyway. Yeah, uh, plus whatever he can make. But he's had a very bad year. So, I mean, he, you know, occasional brilliance, but basically a bad year. He's, he has not been a good yeah. player. So he's going to pick up that option. Uh, so he is back. Well, he's a viable left fielder. I mean, he's a good left fielder. He's an okay right and center fielder. This is that war, as long as we're at it, uh, considered four or more is kind of all-star level. Jose is at 4.1, despite very bad defense. Uh, yeah. But I mean, but still, and he played, we'll say, played 152 games. He's 35 years old. He ah. played 152 games. The rest of these guys can't do anything. Robert is at two point once, even though he only played 98 games. Uh, next, who's next? Who's next in war behind? Uh, I mean, this quiz time beside player position war behind Jose Abreu and Luis Robert. Josh Harrison. Josh Harrison, 1.7 in 113 games. And he wasn't out because he was hurt. He was he was out because they wouldn't let him play. Yeah. If he played more, he's definitely over the two point because war is a cumulative thing. Uh, he's definitely over two. And after that, this is even more fun. Who's next after that? After Harrison? I'm I I can't I don't know how this would be possible, but I'm gonna say Elvis Andrews. You're exactly right. Elvis wow. Andrews at one point four when he came to the team in September. Maybe in it was the very end of August, but they it, have either way, it's no a season month. Left. It's a month. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just insane that your fourth highest player war who played one seventh of the season with you oh my goodness that is just wild that is one bad ball team <laughs> <laughs> hate to say it but and and he's even been weak i mean elvis has i think over his last 25 or 30 he just started out real real strong and of course he, he defensively he's tremendous only reason we were in this thing 
I mean, he he oh, was yeah. the, he was the spark during that brief period of hope. You know, he and he actually was his his disappearance well. at the plate is the exact coinciding with the collapse of the team. Yeah, which so but he's I still guess, batting leadoff. You know, so Miguel and, Cairo can't come back. <laughs> I I I truly don't understand that. I mean, I I, I get being at leadoff for quite some time because we didn't have anyone else. He was great. He was hitting 315, 320 for a while with the Sox. Yeah, but but not bumping him back to give him a a chance to get out of the slump or or something like that is a a bizarre managerial thing, which is perfectly in line with what the White Sox (laughs) have done. When we saw Leori Garcia start, I don't know, a thousand games while he was batting 120 or something like that. hitting, Hitting third on occasion. Hitting third or second or first, uh, which it, it's a it's a different tactic to put the 120 <laughs> hitter there. The 120 hitter with no power in the three slot. It's it's an interesting tactic. I I like the creativity. You know, I'm an artist. I like the creativity there. Uh, but I just don't know if I can give it my full endorsement, uh, especially for yet another season where we will definitely have Leori Garcia. Uh, who, by the way, is a very solid last guy off the bench. I mean, <laughs> Leori is not a bad guy to have when you've had three guys get hurt during the game and you need to put someone out there just to get through the end of it. Uh, but other than that, there's no spot for Leori on a major league roster anymore. And you well, know, this five point is... five million a year for the next two years. There's a spot for Leori on a major league roster. <laughs> For sure. And it's only our major league roster because <laughs> no one else is taking Leori, even at 5.5, which nowadays is a bargain if the person is even sort of decent. Well, a uh, war a war, a war is supposed to be worth around four to five million. So say four and a half million. So he'd have to play it over one war. I didn't look. I know he's negative one. I, yeah. I don't know how far negative he is. I didn't look that far. But uh, I mean, it, you know, Brett, uh, uh, our boss, does. does I think every year, and he'll do it again this year, I'm sure, where he looks at added value, it's attraction value, and he takes war against what a player is being paid. And that's going to be a very, very... That's going to be a very, bleak affair. Very sad look <laughs> this yeah. year. Yeah. You're going to have... Jose is about a break-even because he's paid well. I mean, he's, he's a plus. Uh, obviously, Dylan is a huge plus. Cueto's a very big plus. Uh, Kopek, because, you know, he's getting minimum he's he's a plus and so some of the other guys doing a minimum are, are, are pluses but that because they're getting 750 so they only need a one sixth of two war or four and a, uh, yeah i mean one sixth of a war to, to be reasonable right, right. They, they make that but uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> well on that Aren't we note, out of time can't we be we out, of time? out of time <laughs> <laughs> oh thank goodness we're out of time uh, before we sign off, do you have any final thoughts as we head into the last week of Major League Baseball's regular season? No, uh, no, and that means the White Sox season. Uh, who? No. Let's let's just Next say this. Next time we speak, the season will be over. Yeah. Let, let, let's just say, who are you rooting for moving forward? Just out of curiosity. Let's let's do that. I'm going to root for Cleveland. I don't think they're moving. I think they may win the first round. They won't move forward after that. Houston is far too good for them. But I like the way they play baseball. Me too. Me too. I just like that they don't hit home runs, far fewer than the White Sox. We don't hit homers. We don't hit homers. We don't hit homers. We don't, hit homers and we don't catch the ball and we don't run and we don't do anything. Whereas they're just speed and defense and, and good. I mean, I like Amazing. the way they play. I just, yeah. and, and Tampa Bay plays that way too. So to be fair, you know, that's I, a double thing. I'm very, I'm actually very pro the Cleveland, uh, the Guardian route moving forward. I I think I'm going to uh, send my good vibes to the Pacific Northwest, though. I would like to see Seattle. Uh, uh, yeah. Very, very exciting young team with some really great young stars like Cleveland. Uh, and it would just be a lot of fun. That's a great fan base. Uh, so, so I think I'm going to head to the Pacific Northwest. You're going to stay in the AL Central, which is far more brave than anything I'm going to achieve. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but that is all the time we have for today. We'll talk about the playoff outlook next week when we have it and uh, are about to head into the playoffs. Uh, but for everyone who, uh, you know, listened through this whole season, thank you for listening. Uh, sorry our genius didn't amount to anything else. We know the players listen every week. Uh, we had some good advice. Occasionally they took it and, and they shined like the stars that they are. Uh, but for the most part, this was a bit of a slog. So thank you for listening so much. Uh, and we will see you for some playoff baseball next week here on Sharing Socks.